All right. Kern Cog Public Workshop. Kern 511 System presented by IBI Group. Stacy. Thanks, everybody, uh, for joining. We, uh, there we go. Is that better? Uh, hello, I'm Stacy Unholz with IBI Group. This is my colleague, Jeff Carter. Um, and we are here to uh, present the new 511 system. Uh, Kern has recently deployed a brand new 511 website and telephone system, interactive voice response system. And we wanted to come here and walk you through some of the new features that are available now for travel information to the travelers, residents, and folks coming in and through Kern County. So, um, we, uh, uh, 511 consists of a responsive website and a telephone system, as I said. A uh, responsive website means that the um, uh, the viewing is optimized over different devices so that if you um, if you visit the site on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer at work it's going to resize so that it looks appropriate for the device that you're using to uh, to see the website um, so we uh, what you're seeing here is uh, it's current 511 uh, dot org and dot com and uh, the traffic map ingest data from a third-party data provider called HERE, which you may know as NAVTEC. They were NAVTEC for quite a few years. Uh, we get speed data from NAVTEC actually uh, throughout California, and I can show you a little bit of a, a wider view of that data. Um, we also ingest data from uh, CHP incident data, and from Caltrans we have lane closure and construction data. And so, uh, and also, of course, we have uh, uh, camera images uh, and video and um, uh, DMS. And so, as I um, zoom back in, you can see uh, from with this, the uh, speed data, we have arterials and highways. And so, for the data that we uh, bring in, um, it is available on the map in these selectable uh, layers that you can toggle on and off so that the user can. Um, make the map show the information that the user wants. We've got incidents. Of course, in, in California, we separate our incidents into SIG alerts and non-SIG alerts, and so we have a separate icon for that. Uh, I didn't make a big uh, mess on the highway so that we could show a SIG alert today, but I'm sure you will see it at some point. Uh, Jeff almost did because uh, he doesn't understand LA traffic that well, and Jeff showed up five minutes ago, but I'm glad you're here. Um, oh, construction, um, we've got I uh, cameras, uh, weather, uh, when I click on one of the icons, camera icon, you can actually see the image from that camera. Um, when I click on our weather icon, this is uh, weather data from NOAA, and so we've got atmospheric weather. Um, and let me turn on message signs so that you can also see, you know what, they're on the five, aren't they? Our message signs are here. So again, these are uh, layers that you can toggle on and off. I did also want to show you the weather radar, which is something that is, I think, uh, additional to what you had before. Um, but because we have weather radar for other clients, it's part of our product, and so we're able to deploy it here as well. Um, we, uh, uh, we've got uh, dynamic routing. Uh, we know, for really, we've been in travel information for many years, and we know that what people want is uh, information on their route from here to there. And so, um, we um, we use the Google Map uh, and the Google database. And so, if we are, we can put in a location, we can put an address. Maybe we put in something like, let's say, Kettleman City. Right? Um, and let's say uh, I live in Kettleman City and um, I have a relative who lives in Tehachapi. And so I want to know what the, um, uh, what the traffic is between those two places. So just the first few characters are going to bring up what I want. And then we offer routes, driving routes, uh, transit. When I click here on the car, 
uh, I get a route from uh, the, my origin to my destination. And when you scroll down, you see that um, we provide a travel time. That's a current travel time based on real-time traffic conditions and the distance, of course. Um, on this route that I have made, uh, I see that there's a closure on that route. Um, there's an incident. Uh, these are uh, within the turn-by-turn -turn directions. Uh, and I've got a camera. So uh, the, the data that we bring in is specific to the route that I create uh, is shown in the route. Um, I'm going to clear the route so I can also show you um, if I don't have an address, I don't know exactly where I'm going, I can also right click, start my origin here, wherever I, I know I'm around here, and I'm let's say I'm going to somewhere around here. I right click, I go to here, and again, I set my route, and um, you can see all the information that I talked about. Um, the, uh, the system provides you with two alternate routes as well. And so again, for with real-time traffic, you're going to see what is the best route at that time. Uh, we also offer transit information. And so uh, we, don't, you know, we don't always have transit information. Uh, I mean, there's not always a, a transit route from A to B. So I would go back. Actually, when I go to personalization, I'll show you the, the transit uh, part of that. Um, you'll see up here we have advisories, and that is a place where um, uh, system managers can put in sort of floodgate messages, uh, emergencies, anything that you want people to see as soon as they log on to the site, and that those messages are going to scroll across the screen in red. Um, okay, and so before I go to personalization, do you think there's anything I missed in terms of... All right, let's choose this event up here. And when you click on it, you get the information pop-up. You can see the type of event, uh, description, uh, start time, last updated, so that you know uh, how, uh, w what the, uh, the time of the event is and how real time it is. OK, so um, that is great information, but in travel information really is meant to be personalized. And so you want information, you want to be able to see what's going on in the map, but you want information on your route. And so uh, you are able in the new current 501 system to uh, subscribe, to become a registered user. Uh, I am a registered user of current 511, and so I'm going to log in. And when I log in, I, I'm taken right to uh, the routes that I have saved. Um, on the previous screen, when I saved that route, or when I uh, made that route from Kettleman City to Tehachapi, when you're logged in, you can save the route and name the route. And so that's what I've done in preparation for talking today. Uh, you can go to the map and view exactly that route that you've saved. Um, but also, um, what, uh, what is offered in the, in the system is um, alerting on that route. And so, Let's say you're not always on the website or you're not calling 511 all the time. You want to be alerted if something is going on, if something's reported on the route that you have, when you want to know about it. If you have a route from home to work, you want to know if something's going on in the morning so that you can be alerted before you get on the road. And so uh, we create an alert, OK? And uh, for this. Uh, you can select the days of the week that you want to receive notifications on. Maybe it's every weekday. Maybe it's once a week that you go to the certain place. Um, you set the time period, right? You probably don't want alerts at 3 a.m., but who knows? So you set whatever the parameters are of the routes that you want, or the alerts that you want. Uh, we send alerts by email and by SMS, which is text to your phone. Actually, my phone number is still pending confirmation. Uh, and you can choose uh, the, uh, the type of notification. Uh, people sometimes go in and they choose everything, uh, but you'll, you'll notice that CHP will sometimes update an incident eight or ten times, and so that's not always what people want, but you can go in and adjust those settings so that you are receiving information at the rate that you want. Okay, so uh, continuing on the personalization, when I go to My Map Preferences, uh, when I am logged in, uh, I can control, any user can control what they see on the map when they first log in. Uh, I have selected traffic speeds, incidents, and cameras. Um, if I want 
something else. Let's say I don't want traffic speeds. I don't want incidents. I want weather radar, which I really like. And so I can set the way the, um, the map looks when I first log on. So now when I go to the home page, I am seeing uh, just the things I selected, the closures, the, the cameras, and the weather radar. Um, I am going to also talk a little bit about my cameras. Um, on the map, when you, uh, when you are logged in and you've got the camera layer open, uh, you can click on a camera, this one I already added, you can click on a camera and you can add it to your list so that when you log on to your, your uh, registered account, it shows up in your cameras. And then now if I go to my cameras, I see the cameras that I have selected. And you might select all the cameras on your route so that you can just log in and take a look as you go. Um, I want to uh, also mention that uh, in terms of the responsive website, um, uh, for a demo, you might want to take out your phone and open up your browser, go to, and you have, thank you. And so how does it look? I forgot my $10, so can you hand that to me? <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, that is a, a very brief 10-minute overview of the website. Um, I, I will mention also 501, of course, is available by telephone. And so I encourage you, maybe when uh, rush hour starts tomorrow, to dial 511 and take a listen to it. Um, you'll have your, you can hear traffic information, and uh, if you have registered with the website and confirmed your phone number, you can hear information on the routes that you've set on the phone. It recognizes your number once you've registered it. So I encourage you to do both of those. And I am, first of all, any questions on the, the information, the interface, anything I've covered? Yes, sir. On the incidents, did you say that it was tied into the CHP incident yes. website? Yes. Not okay. the website, the data feed. Uh, it's not always going to be the same because CHP has their media log, uh, so you can. It's not necessarily the same, but uh, for the incidents that are appropriate for this area, we fit, we we have a data interface that connects with that CHP data feed, and then we show it on the map. Okay, thank you. Sure. I have one real quick. How did you pick the locations for the cameras, and are you going to add? Will you be adding more cameras? Caltrans picked those locations. Uh -huh. We just we take the data that is available. So if a new camera goes up and that new location goes into the feed, it's going to show up. Okay. We, we don't have any of our own cameras. That they, they are accessing data from other from sources. Other, okay. One other question. To, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Another question. When you cross over between Kern and, let's say, say Los Angeles County from here to uh, Palmdale, do you have a transfer point or you just log into LA's 511 system. Okay, because we have um, we have a nationwide deal with here data, and so if, if you zoom out on this map, you're going to see that there is speed data for all of California, and so you can have travel time data from here to Palmdale or LA to Palmdale or anywhere uh, in California. So uh, the phone is different because that's a completely different uh, cell towers or different carriers will you know route the calls to the system that is deployed in that area. But for the website, no. I don't want to take up too much of Jeff's time. And, and, we, and we take in CHP events for the whole state as well. Right. So we take in the CHP events for the, the whole state as well, too. So have CHP events all the way to Southern California up to uh, San Francisco, wherever you want to go. Right. Um, same with the lane closure uh, events as well. Right. So now you can see California. Those uh, yellow um, uh, little halos mean that there are too many incidents to show at this zoom level. As you zoom in to these areas, you'll see the uh, incidents that are there. Um, I'm only going to take two minutes. Two minutes? <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the neat things about this uh, this website is it's, it's one of the products that we've developed and we kind of do continuous releases and we update it every month so it's not going to sit stale. And um, and operators or administrators have the ability to um, add alerts, as Stacy mentioned. So I can configure an alert um, if there's flooding or if there's uh, 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 snow in the mountains with uh, winter travel advisory. Um, you can create alerts and identify the time span. So any type of traffic operator, or if these aren't coming from Caltrans, um, people um, at Kern COG can. Uh, uh, enter in the alert messages here as they need to. 
um, to alert the pu public and also you can do a start and end time to schedule those alerts and I want any I I could enter one now um, just as a test I guess test 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 yeah I won't uh, and then once you hit hit save it's going to auto, uh, automatically be published up here on the top bar. Um, another neat feature is um, edit content. Um, so any static page on the website um, can be edited. It's like a content management system. Um, and if I go back to the home page, this alert, um, you can see here if I click on it, I can go in here and edit this content. So this was all edited by our graphics guys, but um, people at Kern County can go in here um, a lot of other clients use this for silver alerts, amber alerts, um, and when there is an emergency alert on the home page, the, page, the website will default to this tab, so the public is aware of these urgent alerts. Um, so it has a lot of uh, neat administrative features, um, and I'm not going to save any changes there as well. Um, and that's all I was going to cover. Um, Again, cameras, if you guys have any cameras to add, there's an administrative portal for cameras for adding additional cameras. And um, we, uh, we can add any number of menu items that you want to have up here and, and, and show people additional content as, as, as you want to update the site as it evolves. So. submit their feedback and let us know how they like it. We are, the design is agile. If we want to make uh, updates and design changes, it's relatively easy depending on what's wanted, but we will be able to uh, take that feedback and act on it uh, as we go. Uh, that's all we have. Any questions? With anyone being able to add an alert to the page, is there someone watching this real time updating? I'm sorry, we, we used alerting, the, the term alert in two different ways. We, the public cannot add alerts to the website. That's an administrative Admin function okay. that is handled by uh, current cog. Understood, yeah. that's all, thanks. Sure. I, I might have missed it, but, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I might have missed it, but on that, I noticed where one of the, the items was cameras list is that uh, a list that shows the uh, location of the of the cameras and those are the Caltrans cameras you mentioned correct, correct. Okay. And, yeah and we, we we do have list pages for all the site stuff you see on the uh, traffic map mm -hmm. um, and the re main reason for that is accessibility um, and also for searching and sorting so if I just want to see uh, all the cameras on i5 I can hit i5 and it will search for any camera on i5 or if I wanted grapevine and I type in grapevine here, I'm going to see any grapevine cameras. So there is list pages for cameras and events, um, mm -hmm. anything you see on the traffic map. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I just had a comment. Um, I just wanted the board to know that when you approved this contract with IBI the third week of April, since that time, they have completely redone our whole um, interactive voice recognition system and our website. So this has been a quick turnaround, and I just want to thank them because they worked hard. <laughs> thank you. Bring this meeting to order. Please stand for the flag salute. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Garola. B. Smith. I'm here. Wood. Vallejo, Here. Mock, Cantu, Maurer. Here. Prout, Crier, 
P. Smith? Here. Wegman? Here. Couch? Here. Scribner? Miller? Here. Dermody? Here. Para? Here. Kiernan? Present. Thank you. Item three, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making your presentation. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncock staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before this action is taken. We have items A through B. No, N. V. That's five. <laughs> a through N. Do I have a motion? Motion to consent. Second. Roll call vote. P. Smith. Yes. Vallejo. Yes. Mauer. Yes. Prout. Yes. Cryer. Yes. P. Smith. Yes. Wegman. Yes. Couch? Yes. Miller? Yes. Dermody? Yes. Para? Yes. Kiernan? Yes. Thank you. Item 5, 2017 Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment Number 17. Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. The 2017 FTIP Amendment includes revisions to the transit program. The public review period began June 8th and ends June 22nd. The Federal Trans Transit Administration Section 5311 funding as approved under the consent calendar is included in this amendment. The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of this amendment on June 25th. State and federal approval is required and at this time I ask that the chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment and then close the public hearing. All right, we will open the public hearing. Do we have any comments from the public on this item? Please go up to the microphone and give your name and address for the record. Ask if it's the right one. Do you want to comment on this item number uh, five? The FTP. The regional transportation plan? No. That's no. the next item. That's the next item. I'm sorry. Just stay up there. <laughs> so, no other public comments? Any comments from the board? I'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? I move we approve. Second. Oh, we don't. No. No, we're not taking No action. action. Oh. Okay. No vote. <laughs> no. All right. That's right. Item six public review draft 2018 Regional Transportation Plan Sustainable Community Strategy. Draft Environmental Impact Report, Draft 2019 Federal Transportation Improvement Program, and Corresponding Draft Air Quality Conformity Analysis, Ms. Pacheco. Thank you. Public review of Kern Cog's long and near term federal transportation documents is currently underway. All documents are available on the Kern Cog website. Comments are due by 5 p.m. July 12th. The first of three public hearings was held June 6th at the Ridgecrest City Council meeting. No comments were received. The second public hearing was held June 19th at the Arvin City Council meeting. One person provided comments. And tonight, I ask that the chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. I will open the public hearing. Public comments. 
My name is Heidi Lanza, and I'm representing the California High Speed Rail Authority. Um, thank you for the opportunity to provide comments of the draft regional transportation plan sustainable community strategy. Since 2015, the city of Bakersfield and the authority have worked on the high speed rail station area plan. I am pleased to announce that in May 2018, the city of Bakersfield approved the high speed rail station plan. Kern County will benefit from the arrival of the high speed rail. Projects such as the proposed commuter rail network and the Meadows Field Airport planning show that the potential for the high speed rail program and the regional transportation projects to com complement each other. In June of 2018, the authority released its 2018 business plan. The plan proposed to build infrastructure to provide mobility, economic and environmental benefits to Californians and to initiate high speed rail service as soon as possible. The business plan identifies two important investment priorities. One, extend the valley to valley service from San Francisco to Bakersfield. We recognize the high ridership and revenue potential of linking the Silicon Valley with the Central Valley between San Francisco and Bakersfield. And two, deliver 20, 224 miles of high speed rail infrastructure for use by 2027. The plan proposes to construct high speed rail infrastructure in the Central Valley, Madera to Bakersfield, and in the Silicon Valley, San Francisco to Gilroy to reduce times in existing passenger rail systems, explain <coughs> clean electrified service, and prepare corridors for testing of potential early high-speed rail operations. As part of our support for the Bakersfield High-Speed Rail Station Area Plan, we want to highlight parts of the plan that relate to the authority station area development policies. We encourage Kern Cog to work with the City of Bakersfield to encourage high-density development a mixed land use, grid street patterns, and compact pedestrian orientation design, context sensitive building design, and limits on space dedicated to parking for new development. In conclusion, we hope Kern Cog and its partners are successful in securing funding to carry out the city's high speed rail station area plan, as well as other regional and transportation projects. Thank you. Any other public comment? Members of the board, I am Lorelai Oviat. I'm the Kern County Director of Planning and Natural Resources. I am also a representative on your RPAC. Um, I have provided this uh, written comments. I'd just like to highlight what I've provided to your staff. And uh, this is actually a diff additional information about rural transit. So first of all, we have worked diligently and hard on this sustainable community strategy for a county that is bigger than Rhode Island. So half of this population lives in the unincorporated area, and many of our cities have transportation and jobs house balancing to get people from where their jobs are to where they need to live. This is a very different SCS, and we cannot uh, create what, uh, what we need for our future by just looking at the kinds of suggestions that are brought from Northern and Southern California. And I believe that the RPAC and our other committees have worked hard with our city partners to make sure that this SCS complies with what the legislature wants while acknowledging that many of our industries need to be in rural areas and our cities are where people live. And we cannot put chemical blending in an urban area and expect it to be safe. So we have a very unique jobs house balance that we need to challenge, that challenges us. I've provided some information that is really an also an outgrowth from our Kern County General Plan 2040. We spent a year speaking, we're in the second year of a three-year project to update comprehensively our general plan. We spent a year at every month speaking on a particular topic. And one of the things that we looked at is our current transit, rural transit, the idea that many people have that we're just going to have buses, uh, you know, many of the fares don't cover those routes. These are not things that I am telling you that you don't already know. And we really need to look at shared mobility. This is 2018. We are looking at 2030, and there are many different ways to get things. You can actually get food now 
through Uber Eats, okay? There are many different ways of delivering things, and we need to be forward thinking so that our smaller communities thrive and so that our cities can actually get people to where the jobs are. So part of what I've submitted for the record is a very interesting uh, new, just off the press, April 2008, Promising Practices for Increasing Access to Transportation in Rural Communities. It has a rural access toolkit. It includes all sorts of new ways of shared mobility. These are the kinds of things that are built into the SCS that you have been provided. And while I appreciate comments that talk about modeling, I'm here to say as a land use planner, modeling is only one snapshot of a scenario. And the kinds of public comments that I find the most useful are the ones that want to talk about what are we implementing? What are our policies? How are we moving forward? Because we could spend the rest of our life debating the modeling. So I just wanted to provide this to you. I know that your staff is very forward thinking and I just appreciate the great challenge that we all have in diversifying our economy while making sure that our cities can grow as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Dennis Fox. I'm chairman, members of the COG, and um, something that uh, I have three things I'd like to talk to you about. First one has to do with um, circulation of the traffic and doing it correctly. As it's going now, we have, and I'm looking at it from funding sources, and I think we all get fined on our vehicle registration for not having good air, and the money goes to the air district. It's kind of like saying, hey, Jesse and Frank, that was a good job you did sticking up the bank. Here's some more. <laughs> so what I would like to see the money come down to. And starting off, and I think this would be the outfit to go through it, that is the traffic lights coordinated. 24th, they widened, but the, I just came in from Costco and it's backed up. They didn't coordinate the lights out there. So uh, I think it'd be nice to have a city that does coordinate their traffic lights, borrow a contract with them, especially like when the bubble bursts, and uh, they're in, come down and train some of our people so that we will have the people trained by the winners and not theoretic. That would uh, work. and. It would improve the air. If you take a look at the trucks like I just did on uh, Rosedale, when they leave the truck, the light turns green, the smokestack turns black. So there is a nexus, and it would be a way to get some money for it. That would pay off. And it has a nexus to their fines. The second one has to do with sound. I love the sound of the, putting up these sound walls around all of a sudden out here on 58. That's really nice. The people who live there will not have to hear the noise of the fenders, the mufflers, and the tailpipes falling off because of the condition of the road that just got another lane added. Well, either somebody isn't doing something so you might want to think about, <clears throat> and uh, funding this stuff, from fines. Get your own weight truck. And um, trust me, if you get a weight truck, then you'll see another one come down here from the state, get things in order, or else they can construct it the way it should have been constructed. There are harmonics that make that thing bounce when you tear up the road, but it doesn't need to be. I have seen roads. The worst one, second worst one, is in Kings County. It goes from Corcoran down to the, the Duck Refuge. The next, but they run tr tractors on it with the 
with plowing, you know, with the disc. The worst one, absolutely worst road, if you want it, I really suggest you go see it. You'll love it, you'll appreciate your own area. And that's in Tehama County on uh, Hogsback Road, which is a lava flow. And it does have fenders and everything laying over it. What I was thinking is if you can get the, we need truck travel. And something I picked up here a couple of years ago that was suggested, and maybe just here on a seasonal, and that is instead of trucks, train travel from here to uh, the boats and the ships to move our commodities from here, which will make it more attractive, and to in LA, but mainly uh, as it goes up, moving the commodities to Oakland and getting them on and using uh, containers at that time, have a container off. This is not just me. This was in the 2010 plan of the city of Bakersfield out at uh, 7th Standard. There is a uh, area out there currently is uh, called a logistics center and it would be set up for it and I think you can match it with uh, the person that owns that take it out of their petty cash. I think that would be wonderful. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Fox. You. Any more public comments? Good evening. Uh, my name is Adianka Glover, and I'm an attorney with Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. Um, I would like to thank uh, this board, or these boards and committees, for the opportunity to present comments on the draft 2018 Regional Transportation Plan. Um, first, as an organization that works with rural communities and also in low-income communities of color, and recognizing that underinvestment happens in those communities, we believe that more policy recommendations within Chapter 2 should priori prioritize these communities. Um, also, the draft is vague concerning whether the scenarios from the 2014 RTP uh, were used again in the 2018 draft. Um, the RTP uh, should describe how the four scenarios in the 2018 cycle are different from the 2014 cycle and how the current Council of Governments use the feedback from this cycle's public participation um, uh, process to inform and develop, uh, to inform development of the 2018 scenarios. Um, finally, we do not believe that outreach um, was thoroughly done um, to garner um, a good turnout of public attendance um, from various segments of the community um, at the Arvin, um, public review period, or sorry, public hearing. Um, um, and I would also like to mention that these aren't Leadership Council's um, complete comments. We have submitted one preliminary comment letter on June 1st. Um, we uh, made comments in Arvin, and we uh, will be submitting a comment letter um, by July 12th. Um, and so, and I would also finally like to say that we do appreciate that Kern Cog staff um, has met with our organization and continues to meet with our organization to address the needs of the communities that we work with. Thank you for your time. Do you live in Kern County? I do live in Kern County. Okay. Yes. Did you give us your address? Oh, no, ma'am. Um, is my business address fine? That's fine. Okay. Um, it is 1527 19th Street. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? I thought I heard you say that you didn't think that the public outreach was adequate. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have any, and you could give them to us separately, you don't have to, I don't want to put you on the spot right mm -hmm. this second, but do you have any specific suggestions on how we could improve that? Uh, yes, I, am, I think that um, both in-person announcements going to places that um, residents, for example, who live in Arvin or near Arvin frequent. Um, and those announcements should be in both English and Spanish, just given the predominance of Spanish being spoken there as well. Um, I also think that, um, and I'm not, and please, uh, if any of the staff would like to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if such a notice was um, posted maybe in the city council office um, or posted in any, again, of public places that people frequent in the area. 
um, because residents that uh, our organization works with um, who are very involved in uh, participating in community-based organizations um, were not aware, at least the ones that we spoke with until we made the announcement. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Troy Hightower. I'm an independent transportation consultant uh, locally here. Um, I have a few comments that I'd like to make. I, I do have prepared remarks that go into more detail. Um, first of all, I, I've been very involved with the RPAC meetings and their committee um, activities. Um, one of my um, initial concerns is that um, prior to the release, of the draft document, um, none of the performance measures or indicators or, or um, projected GHG reductions, which are key to the SCS, uh, were available to either the RPAC or at any of the um, public meetings. And so without the benefit of being able to review prior to the draft, the, a lot of the questions that I and others have about what's in the draft, I think could have been addressed prior to the um, release of the draft. Um, for example, on table two, which is list of policies and strategies that uh, Kern Cog proposes to for the SCS, there was considerable discussion about those policies and strategies, and that did include some input from stakeholders and others. However, the list of policies and strategies in the table that's in the draft is considerably longer than what's been presented or reviewed by the committee. And, and in most of those, um, I wasn't aware of at all. So I think that it's policies and strategies that are being asked to be adopted should have at least have been reviewed by um, RPAC. Uh, moving on to <clears throat> the environmental justice analysis, um, there was a some statements made that the <coughs> environmental justice communities will be better off than in most measures of performance than the region as a whole. However, in Appendix D, if you look at the tables, eight of the tables on environmental justice and six of the tables, there were 12 tables altogether, about that had EG analysis, they all indicated that the 2442 no build was better than the plan. That that raises concerns because it shows not only were the e, these communities impacted, they don't benefit from from the plan. In addition to that, the the map that's in the draft, I, I have a copy of it, and I'm sure. Excuse me, you might not be able to see this, but it's a single color map of an area that represents both the EJ and the Title VI areas. Um, the document does state, and as committee have, have mentioned, that the source for these maps is the EJ screen tool. And this is a map from the EJ tool. And it's color coded, and it has a legend that indicates in 10 percentage increments which areas are 10, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent um, communities based on this. However, there's no correlation between what percentage was used to create these maps. The only qualifier is the term predominantly. And so there's no correlation between that, that you could determine between the source map and the map in the document. The reason I bring that up <clears throat> is because the map in the document is further used to determine what traffic analysis zones are analyzed in the plan, in the model, as well as um, the environmental document. So for example, all the performance measures that you see and are, are um, presented come from analysis based on those TAS, that's the abbreviation TAS areas. Well, since there's not a correlation between what are the actual EJ areas and there's no map of the TASs that were used, so there, it would be impossible to determine 
what TASs were actually used or how they correlate with the source, the EJ screen. So when you look at the analysis, the, the source is missing on one, the methodology of how they created the map, as well as a map that shows these are the analysis zones that were actually analyzed to get to the numbers that are in the tables. And, and one more point, I, I, I apologize if that's a little technical. But the analysis goes, breaks it down into further to urban areas, rural areas, and countywide. And there is no definition or map illustrating these are the metro urban areas analyzed and these are the rural areas. So I, I wanted to bring that to your attention. And then finally, on, in the EIR, The, under the alternatives analyzed, they're not consistent with what's in the plan. So, for example, the EIR compares um, analysis from a, an existing scenario and a 2042 no project area. I'm not familiar of, of an existing scenario alternative. However, later in the EIR, there's some additional alternatives mentioned as no project, old plan, a countywide infill, and a slow growth alternative. So these are all alternatives that were not presented to the RPAC uh, or, or in the public meetings. And so whatever the indicators or whatever growth patterns these other scenarios may have, um, the public and the RPAC did not have the benefit to analyze those to help provide more input into the actual plan. So I think that that's a, a concern that I think the board should look into. Um, I, I raise all these issues beca because of my interest in having the SCS to be the best that it can, and, and I bring these up hopefully so that we can improve the SCS. My concern is that at the last RPAC meeting, uh, both staff and some members mentioned that there will be no changes to the draft. And I think um, that that's concerning based on just these summary um, issues that I raised that I think could be corrected. And, and I would ask the board to consider to either uh, extend the public comment period and allow staff to update um, some of the information in the RPAC. I didn't mention some of the errors in here that are in, um, in the SCS as well. There's a lot of comparisons that appear to be cut and paste out of the previous one that just need to be updated. But I, but I would respectfully ask that the, the board consider either extending the public period to give staff better time, more time to, to analyze the um, comments made and see how they could update uh, the draft before going further in asking the RPAC to adopt it and recommend it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. We do? One more. Yeah. Thank you. Lorelai Oviat, Director of Kern County Planning and Natural Resources. I'd just like to note that the previous speaker may be an expert on transportation, but I'm a CEQA expert. And the relationship between alternatives in an EIR and alternatives in the SCS are not the same, and they cannot be the same. And as a member of the RPAC, I would have found it a violation of sequel processing to have staff bring forward any discussion of alternatives in an environmental impact report to let us determine what should be in there. Those are standards under the California Environmental Quality Act, and those are different from the alternatives that you put into an SCS. So I'd just like for your board, since there were presentations that seem to imply that staff is somehow not bringing forward information, I just wanted to put that in the record for now, and I'm sure that staff will look at all of the comments and bring forward some resolution for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to close public hearing. Do we have a motion? We don't no, anything. nothing? We're good. All right. Caltrans report. Am I on? I'm, okay, got it, I think. 
Okay, first um, first project that I would like to report on is the Famoso State, State Route 46 and 99 Bridge. The bridge work is continuing. However, a full closure of 99 is expected later this month uh, to prepare the site for the false work placement. Import borrow will, uh, will end mid next week. And then the next project uh, is the State Route 99 Taft Highway Rehabilitation. Um, that's near the city of Bakersfield from north of Herring Road, overcrossing to Pacheco Road, undercrossing. Contractor is working on the southbound number four lane, removing and replacing um, CRCP, continuous reinforced concrete pavement. And then uh, State Route 46, um, that's taking, and that's segment 4A to widen 46 from two lanes to four lanes uh, between Lost Hills Road and I-5. Um, abutman, abutman 1 and 5 are in settlement period for 90 days. Contractor has constructed curb and gutter at uh, on 46. Contractors constructing new county road. Chevron is removing the pipes, and Lost Hills Utility District is removing water lines. However, PG&E has no plans to relocate underground utilities, which may delay the project. Contractors started the West Side Canal construction. That happened on uh, June 18th, and also the main flood canal construction also happened on June 18th. Fish and Game has um, approved a permit, which is good. Biologists are out there monitoring. Cottonwood East uh, Rehabilitation. On State Route 58 in Bakersfield from the Cottonwood Road undercrossing to east of State Route 58 and 184 separation. Contractors continuing to work on the inside shoulder for stage two of the project. The traffic will shift to the inside for the CRCP and that'll be uh, 40 to 45 to 60 working days. Projected completion for this project is March 29th uh, of 2019. I don't know how anybody can say March 29th of 2019. <laughs> I would just say in March sometime or maybe in spring of some 2019. I, I, you know, you know how things go. I don't know how anybody can say that. Um, Kern, uh, the State Route 65 rumble strips and that is uh, in uh, Kern County from 7th Standard Road to north of Avenue 196. Contractors completed the center line rumble strip and striping operations along with um, traffic loops. Uh, they did that on, um, let's see, an installation of traffic, which was completed actually last month. So um, now we've got the last one, um, Kern 33 and 119. Those are rumble strips also. So center line rumble strips um, between on 33 and 19 at var various locations. It's about 80% complete, and the remaining work is um, the installation of the traffic count stations, and they're waiting for approval of the electrical um, enclosures to complete that work. And that was all I had, unless there's questions, comments? Yeah. Mr. Couch? What do we do about PG&E? And run <laughs> that by me again. So they're saying currently... They have no plans to relocate. Typically, um, in with utility companies, they're kind of on their own schedule. So <laughs> we have a very hard time with not, I mean, the railroad's even worse, but um, I'm, sh we're, I'm sure we're working with them. But right now, there isn't a plan. But um, I'm sure that our project manager will be. This is two miles stretch. Mm -hmm. is, it, is what they have, the I'm, entire stretch of the two miles? You know, I'm not sure of the, I'm not sure. I don't know if Aaron knows any more than I do. I, I can look into it, Supervisor, okay. yeah. to get you more detailed information. Yeah. And we, I can certainly, like I say, t take that back and find out. I, w we wouldn't let it go, so, but the plan, just currently there isn't anything, so I'm sure we'll be coordinating with them, which we usually do. So, but they're saying there could be a delay. Um, so... I'm all about transparency, so <laughs> I didn't want to just leave that out. So I thought it was important. So well, to be continued. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gil. 
All right, on to District 9, which in your packet, I have included three items, a district boundary map, the Fre Freeman Gulch ribbon cutting press release, and the Eastern Kern construction map. So I just want to let you all know at the last meeting it was requested that we provide a map of kind of the boundary of District 9 versus District 6 in Kern County. As we heard earlier, Kern County is very large and def definitely has different geography. And, and so uh, that now you know who to call if you have questions. Also, uh, you have a press release for the Freeman Gulch 4 lane on State Route 14. It's been a project in progress for many, many years, I think over 20. But if you really want to look at the corridor 4 lane plan, that goes back to 1955. Yep. We're getting there. <laughs> yes. That picture was taken last week at the ribbon cutting ceremony. It was about 90 degrees at that time. We drove through there today. It was 109. Oh, so. Board Member Maurer, I'm sorry, Ridgecrest is so hot right now, but <laughs> we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I also provided a construction map within your packet just to let you know what's going on in eastern Kern County. Um, some of these projects are in progress. Some will be starting up. One of the biggest ones I want to uh, mention here early on, and I'll bring it back information as I know more in August, is the Cash Creek Bridge Replacement Project on State Route 58. That's a biggie. That's going to cause some delays on State Route 58. So as I know more and what's going on with traffic handling plan and everything in that area, I will let you all know. Um, a couple items I wanted to follow up on, too. There's been a lot of talk on SB1 um, for District 9, which includes e Eastern Kern, Inyo, and Mono counties. With Senate Bill 1, we have approximately $727 million over the next 10 years in our plan. Without SB1, we'd be looking at about $188 million. And so if that was the case, we'd only be able to do about 25% of our projects without SB1 going forward. So I just wanted to bring highlight that to everyone so they're aware of, of the financial impacts. Um, I also do want to bring up a couple of consultant studies that we just kicked off recently. One of them is the District 9 Intelligent Transportation System Master Plan, similar to what Kern Cog just did for their ITS plan. We are embarking on our own for our district. And then also we're working on a freight study. A lot of focus on State Route 58 because as we all know that's a huge goods movement corridor for the state of California. And to kind of tie into that, we are looking at next year working on a project initiation document which is a very early on document trying to find out what the cost would be to identify uh, truck climbing lanes on eastbound State Route 58. And Gail and I have been over here talking about, I know it's close to the border on some of those truck climbing lanes, and some of them will be within District 9. So we, we're working on a plan. That's been one of my pet uh, conversations I've had with the board for a number of years. Good. And that's very good news to see that maybe we're going to take the brakes off and put it into gear at least. Yeah. I know these things take a long time. Yeah. But I think it's very important to... Uh, find exactly where those cl truck climbing lanes start. There's a, a few areas where they make a lot of sense, and they do. There's going to be definitely in this district, and then in District Nine as well. Sure. So uh, probably General Beale Road, and then starting again just east of 223. You're probably fully aware, but uh, oh. just so they're designated and very well vetted early on, so that we don't, yes, uh, you know say, oh, we should have done that one first or the second or right. should have included it, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And those of you that drive that every day or frequently, I'm going to be calling you just to say, hey, does this look like the right area? That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. R R Ryan, can, yeah. can I, I add that the PSR that was done in 2003 used uh, mostly engineering data to select the locations. It was based strictly on grade. And I would ask that you consider... Council Member Smith, that y you don't just do it on uh, on the mathematics, but okay. actually take counts out there and observe the speeds of the trucks and adjust the locations yeah. to where the trucks are actually slowing down. Absolutely. And that was my concern on that other PSR. I wanted to make sure we get the right spot. So. Yeah. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board Members. Uh, I have about uh, six or seven items on this agenda. The first is the great news, which is a few weeks old right now. Uh, first item in your packet is uh, Kevin McCarthy, the Majority Leader in the House, and our Congressman 
announced on in early June that Bakersfield would be one of two recipients in California of an INFRA grant. Congratulations to Bakersfield and everyone who was involved. We received $50 million for the region's highest priority project, which will allow the region's highest priority project to be delivered without any bonding. C congratulations to all the board members, everyone that was involved. Good job. <laughs> Related to that good news, um, Supervisor Scribner and I and uh, Nick Fiddler, the Bakersfield Public Works Director, met with the California Transportation Commission on June 13th to discuss uh, advancing our STIP money, the current COG STIP money, $63 million that we have scheduled to receive in June 2019. Thank you very much to Supervisor Scribner uh, for attending that meeting with us. Uh, we did ultimately get approval to do that. Uh, that will be acted upon by the CTC. And if you will allow me, Madam Chair, uh, to talk a little bit about what we accomplished. So we, we had city government, county government, regional government, state government, and federal government all represented, all sitting around one table talking about a project that was of mutual interest to all of us. And it's amazing what you can get done when you, ha you have five levels of government all on the same page, all working uh, towards a common goal. And uh, that's we often come together on transportation issues, on some other issues we don't often come together. So th thank you all uh, for that and cross your fingers in less than six months we'll have that final project underway. At the CTC meeting in May, May 16th and 17th, um, the CTC awarded um, I believe $25 million to the Centennial Corridor which brings the grand total in the last four months to I believe almost a hundred and seventy million dollars so, so, so that that bears worth repeating just in the last six months Kern Cog, City of Bakersfield, County of Kern, the state and the federal government have all worked together to cobble together a hundred and seventy million dollars to deliver this board's highest priority project that, that's more great news uh, at the CTC meeting next week, June 27th and 28th, the CTC is expected to approve uh, that $25 million allocation so the city can start work on um, a subset of the Centennial Corridor. As a reminder, this board will be dark in July. Up on the screen, you see the pictures of uh, the Freeman Gulch ribbon cutting. Thank you, Council Member Maurer, and she's not here to, uh, today, but Mayor Wood also attended that, and I believe the mayor of uh, Ski, Ski Town up in uh, Mammoth Lakes, Mammoth Lakes all also attended. That, me that um, ribbon cutting was attended by Inyo, Mono, Kern County uh, staff and electeds, and also District 9 staff and District 6 staff. It represents, unfortunately, almost uh, 25 years of effort. Projects should not take that long to deliver. I've challenged everyone to deliver the next two phases of that project, which will go all the way down in to, to the entrance, northern entrance of Red Rock Canyon uh, in less than 10 years. Hopefully, cross your fingers, we can do that. Um, and finally on this agenda, uh, Mr. Ball on our staff attended a invitation-only event at the governor's office last week to talk about um, freight movement in, in California. Subject to your questions, Madam Chair and board members, that concludes my report. Any questions for Mr. Hakimi? I just had one comment on the uh, grants that we got over the last few months. I know Aaron's been working on those for years, the city and, and consultants all, you know, it all came together in the last few months, but it's uh, work that's been done over many years. And when I, six years ago, the, the estimated borrowing was $270 million uh, to finish the Centennial Corridor, and now it is zero. So good work. Thank you.
thank you, Council Member Smith. I, I forgot to mention, we talk a lot about Centennial Corridor. It is our region's highest priority project, but a, as a reminder, it is a project of national significance. That's why the federal government has contributed so much money. It is a project that's good for the nation, the state, the region, and certainly all of Kern County. It is not a, a local project. It is not about Bakersfield. It truly is a project of national significance. It is essentially the extension of Interstate 40, which runs from North Carolina, uh, where it intersects with I-95, the main north-south route on the east coast, all the way to Interstate 5, which is the main interstate on the west coast of the United States. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Going into the current Council of Governments agenda, the roll call remains the same? I a added Mayor Gorilla. Oh, okay. Item two, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the council. Do we have any public comments for this agenda? Seeing none, consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncock staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. We have items A through D. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Gorilla? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Maurer? Yes. Prout? Yes. Pryor? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Yes. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Madam Chair and Board Members. Um, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council will be meeting in Fresno. I plan on attending by phone along with uh, Mayor Wegman and any anyone else who's interested in attending that meeting, I can give you the information to call in or if you would like to drive to Fresno, I will give you the information on where that meeting is. Um, May 24th, which was a week after our last board meeting, uh, Supervisor Couch, Mayor Wegman and s staff along with a member of uh, Majority Leader McCarthy's staff all piled into a van and drove down to Santa Clarita where we met with elected officials and staff from the Southern California Association of Governments. Had a, a good conversation that lasted uh, two, two and a half hours over lunch. We talked about issues uh, of concern to both regions. Um, some of that conversation centered on how important uh, Interstate 5 is to both of our regions. It's something we uh, do on a regular basis with our neighbors to the south and, and will likely continue doing. Please, uh, please let me know if you'd like to, con like to participate in those meetings in the future and, th and thank you uh, Mayor Wegman and Supervisor Couch uh, for your leadership at, at those meetings. Um, as was mentioned in, I believe, some of the public comments and staff reports, we held RTP public hearing meetings in Ridgecrest, Arvin, and tonight. Uh, you heard the comments tonight. Uh, there, was, there were no comments at the Ridgecrest meeting, one comment at the Arvin meeting. All those meetings were properly noticed on, the, on our website uh, and on the city councils where they were held. Um, advertised in English and Spanish were appropriate, properly advertised, and uh, were, were not well attended. And, and I believe that they were not well attended because there's not a huge uh, public interest in, in what we do in transportation. Uh, as a reminder, the, the public review period ends July 12th. Um, for the RTP, the RTP, SCS, EIR conformity adoption will be at our August board meeting. Uh, so please uh, pencil that into your calendar, August 16th. We will need a quorum for that meeting. In your folder this evening, a copy of the press release from Majority Leader McCarthy announcing the 
fifty million dollars. Outreach efforts with uh, focus on at least three articles on that fifty million dollar grant. And as a reminder, there was, I believe, less than twenty grants granted nationwide, and as I mentioned before, only two grants in California. One went to Bakersfield and one went to Santa Clarita, which will improve Interstate 5 in the vicinity of 14, which is something that many of us use on a regular basis. Timeline that covers June, July, August, and September. The District 9, District 6 map that Ryan mentioned the news release that was previously mentioned by Ryan, the District 9 construction contracts, a notice from, from, for the FTA 5311, that's uh, transit grants for um, the smaller cities that does not include Delano and Bakersfield, a schedule of all of our cash disbursements for May, a copy of Mr. Fox's letter um, that he talked about, a community voices piece by Leticia Perez talking about Proposition 69. Oh, and finally, some really great news, a copy of a letter from the state controller accepting our 2016 audit with no findings. Congratulations to our administrative staff and the board's leadership in getting us to this point. So an, another audit with no findings, which is what you expect from us. And that, that's all I have, Madam Chair, subject to your questions. Any questions for the executive director? Any member statements? Yes, Mr. Garolo. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just want to thank Kern Cog staff for coming out to Arvin and to having that uh, hearing for the RTP and the uh, SCS. Um, it was properly noticed, and um, it's just in the middle of July or middle of June and, and during the summer. And so, um, but be there next week, and I'm sure it's going to be uh, packed full of people. Um, but uh, I thank you for that, and also just want to highlight the importance of SB1 dollars. I know the city of Arvin. Uh, we had our budget issues. We just adopted a balanced budget just for this fiscal year, but we still got to build back our, our reserves. I know the city of Bakersfield is thinking about putting a tax on the ballot. Um, and so it's really, really important uh, that we do what we can to, to protect those SB1 revenues because we all know um, the importance of infrastructure in terms of economic development and growth for our city. So I just want to reiterate that. Thank you. Thank I have you. a couple of comments really quick. Yes, Cindy. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know, GET has two really good programs this summer. One is uh, we extended our youth pass for the summer. I think we extended it by about a month. So that's a really good way for youth to get around um, with the summer youth pass. And the other thing is we will be giving free rides for the elderly to all the uh, cooling stations. I think there are two of them. And it will actually be a get a lift that will go to your house and pick you up and take you to the cooling station. And it's free. There was a couple people that I had talked to and they s wanted to know how much it was. And I, it's completely free and they'll get you and they will take you back home. The other is just really quick I wanted to uh, speak to what Director Oliviat said about shared mobility. Shared mobility is not the future. It's here and get is trying we are exploring ways of trying to incorporate shared mobility with our fixed routes and i know our system only touches part of the county but uh hopefully whatever pilot project we have will uh, benefit the county in the future so you can learn from us we're trying to learn from other people so uh hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future that's it great thank you cindy Yes, Mr. Akimi. There, there was an item that was on the agenda that um, our council reminded us was that was a mistake. So item closed session. X or 10, there is no closed session right. tonight. There is no closed session. So this meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.